Hi, this is Ant Miner Repair, and tonight we're going to continue our series on S17 Plus Zero ASIC problems. Now I have 35 boards with zero ASICs, so I don't think I'll get 35 videos out of this, but <clears throat> as I come across new zero ASIC issues, I'll throw a video out. So hopefully, um, if you watched them all, you might be able to make a list of all the places you check. I have a real good one that I did that just goes through testing um, all the chips and voltages. I highly recommend that. Um, but this is kind of like a one-off thing that happened to me. This board actually ran for about <laughs> 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And then it just, the, the machine, after I, I, I had worked on it, found all ASICs. So, that, so And I stuck it in the machine and it, it starts to begin to hash. gets up to about 2 tera hash or 5 tera hash and then it stopped. It's like, oh man, what is going on? And so um, I took it apart. I think this one I had baked, or I baked it afterwards. And then I just started searching around, and I found found some clock issues. I replaced this chip, and I replaced this chip up here. Um, but and then I went through, and I got clock working. So I went through and got the clock working all the way to the end. So I've got good clock all the way across the board. Then I started checking RO, which runs from this chip down to number one, backwards, and it was completely dead. It's like, well, man, um, actually, first I thought it was just dead here with the chip I replaced. So I just kind of messed with this and messed with this, and finally I just said, wait a minute. Um, I want to see if RO is even here, um, and it's, it's literally just dead everywhere. So I, I started to inspect, and tonight I'm just going to take you through what I inspected and then what finally I found. So if you like this content, this type of content, hit subscribe because you'll find out when I post more. Um, also that little bell over there, you can click it. If you subscribe, it helps me know that there's people out there listening. So I appreciate it. Don't get extra money for it. Maybe get some accolades from YouTube, but that's about it. So, um, but I do appreciate you subscribing. Um, you guys, if you have questions about this, the real place to be is the Discord server. The link is in the description. Um, over 2,000 people in there talking about hashboard repair. All the, all the models. Um, not very strong on, on some of the not ant, ant miner stuff, but I think we're going to grow that out in a bit too. So um, we've got people from all over the world working on hashboards and some real experts in there. So I, I really want to um, stress that you need to go there. It's hard for me to answer things on YouTube. Just frankly, YouTube's great, but can't answer them there. So, all right, so let's get started. Um, I have this hooked to a power supply, not the Antminer power supply. I'm only doing a check chip check, so I don't need the full Antminer power supply because it's not going to test hashing. Obviously, it wouldn't get that far anyway. Um, so I, I was just poking around, and I'll just show you this voltage. I'm going to hit the test button over here, and we'll get voltage in a second. But, you know, just... I, I, I was down here on this last chip, and I know it's kind of glare. I don't even know if I can go in. Maybe. We'll try that. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Down on this last chip, and the clock signal's to the right, so I was checking it out. As soon as it gets voltage, it hasn't started up yet. It's getting ready to start up. Yeah, so there's 0.8 volts coming out of the first chip. 0.8 volts coming in. This is like the test point before everything starts. If I take the RO port way down here that you can't quite see off the screen, sorry, um, there's just like not much going on. There's just zero. And the way I know it's not the first chip is if you go to the second chip over, that provides a different ground than the first chip. You should see some voltage. It's a good way to check is there voltage at this part. So there's, there's just like nothing there. And I remembered on the T17, on the very last domain, way out here from the power supply over there, that it actually ran voltage up backwards. And so that got me thinking that maybe this is the case with the S17, and I, I, it might be. Still haven't verified that, but it made me wonder that if the voltage isn't coming up this way, going up to this chip, and then it grabs here the regular LDOs on the other side, the low dropout um, regulators. So... so um, I started searching around. So what we're going to do tonight is track this back over here. Um, there's two chips that handle the communication of the chips. I'm going to look at those. And I'm going to do that under the microscope. So you can't see the meter, but I'll kind of explain what I did. 
Now I'll flip over the board and show you what I found. It's, it's kind of interesting. Not sure what happened. So um, let me raise you all up here and move in the microscope. And I'll show you those test points real quick. So let me switch video sources for you. Be nice if I had a... Let me see, microscope. Okay. All right, so here we go. So we're about three chips off. So this is the ending chip. And um, this is that special test point. So this special test point, you can test against this chip, chip number one. But if chip number one is bad, geez, I hope I don't have a missing resistor there. You never know. I'll have to go check some other boards. Yeah. I always look for missing resistors because you just never know with these boards I got. That almost looks like one there, but I'll have to check. But anyway, that's not our point right now. Um, so if you test this against this and this chip's bad, it's going to show no power. Like if you test clock right here, which comes off that Y1, there's a crystal on the other side. It comes and pops through the board here. Um, it'll show no voltage because the chip's bad. But if you want to check to see if there's actually voltage coming through, Put your ground over on this chip over here, which is on a completely different domain. Some voltage should show up. So if it's getting voltage here, you know it's the chip. If it's not getting voltage at all, it means we have to go experiment further. So um, I spent several hours following this dude clear back to the other side of the board. I'm going to have to do a combination of microscope and refocus. All right. So, so these dudes come back here and disappear. Um, they don't really disappear. You can kind of poke around. Um, they go in near there on the other side, and they're all, kind of all over the place. Um, but basically, they come up to where the PIC chip, which is right there, the PIC 16F170-04, if you want to call it that. Um, they come up by the PIC chip, but they also, there's your EEPROM, but they also come up to the I to C communication chips. The I to C communication is done by these two CT1F chips. One is for RO, one is for, I believe, the clock. Uh, might be mistaken. Maybe these go somewhere else, but I think one's 0.8, which tells me um, it might talk through the clock channel, but I don't recall that. It might be just one of the other signals. And this guy right here feeds 1.8 out. The way you can test it is the, the pin across from number one, that little dot's number one, should put out the output. So I started testing this, and indeed, these were okay. That has to look really in good shape. It looks like they haven't been hot or anything, or they're brand new. Actually, this whole miner looks, you know, pretty good shape. It looks like the board hasn't run much. But, um, I, so I started questioning, well, gee, if, the, if this has 1.8 going out, I, which I, on the T17, I think that feeds the RO port. Um, why am I not getting 1.8 volts? So um, let me turn off my power supply. And unplug this dude because I was just testing it. So I started like, well, let me see. The output of this guy, <laughs> the output of the 1.8 goes through. This is the capacitor to ground, and it goes through here, capacitor to ground, and then it pops into the board here. So I'm hoping, in most cases, there's a hole on the other side of the board and tells where it comes out. Um, can I find it? I don't know. I think I know where it's at. It's actually probably right. Hold on, let me get the board underneath there. Where I'm pointing, refocus. So actually, I think it, I think it pops out here, if I'm not mistaken. And then it does some stuff. Um, I'm just gonna say stuff because I'm not going over this entire circuit. So I was like studying this. I was like, okay, following this around. I know one of these guys up here, the 3.3 .3 volts is here. So you, can, so you can see if there's voltage there, but that comes in from the control board. And then I just started poking around here, and I got to here. I said, man, that just does not look right. So I've got this, uh, this thing. Um, it's actually like a resistor without paint. It's kind of bizarre. It's like it's still there. In fact, it might be might have just lost its writing, but it looks like something happened to it. And this looks a little roughed up, and this looks like it was just ripped out. I think there was a piece of this left. And so my first question was, well, that doesn't look right, but 
you know, you see diode 4 or diode on the boards, and there's not really a diode, but um, what's that supposed to look like? And so, if you get a board out that has this, so let me get a different 0 ASIC S17 board out. That's what it's supposed to look like. So, I studied some of my other boards, and, and that guy's there, but so we're missing a 10, this is like a, I think it's a 10K, 10 to the, 10 to the second power, so 10 times 100 um, would be a thousand. No, it's got to be more than that. So it's a hundred times 10 to the second. So, um, so it's a hundred times a hundred, right? A thousand, 10,000. Yeah. So it's a 10 K resistor. In fact, that's what it says on the thing. And then I noticed there's a diode and I looked it up. It's WJ. So I did an internet search, found it. Um, they're 30 cents a piece. I don't know why this is missing on my board and this one's trashed, but, um, that's what I found. I tested the voltage coming in right here to this resistor. It's about 28 volts. I did not test the voltage here, but so what I'm going to do with my other board, this is going to be a short video. You don't need to see me replace resistors. I pulled these two dudes because I don't have the parts in stock right now of, of this miner. So I pulled these two guys off the board, um, off a of parts board, and I'm going to put them on and I'm going to try it. What I'm worried about is you can fix the where something breaks, but not fix the problem causing them to break. So I'm, I'm a little bit leery that something else is going on, but, but these are cheap parts, really easy to solder. So I'm going to throw two on there and I'm going to give it a try. Take note, the negative side of the diode is up here. Um, but I did want to show you one other thing. Um, this is actually the first step in the Bitmain guide. So let's do... So, anybody that's looked at the Bitmain guide has seen this. Um, these four chips right here, everybody knows about those dudes. When you get a big fire out and the board burns, it's usually, most of the time, it's through, you know, one of these chips right here. Um, but up above that, on the S17 Plus manual, you got this. And um, what they say is when you have a zero ASIC problem, you should check these two parts in here. And lo and behold, um, this part seems to be okay. I think if I'm reading right, let me, I'm pretty far away from my screen. That's Q4 and that's Q3. And if you look at this really close, there's a 2700 ohm resistor. Make sure I got that right. 2700 ohm resistor popping out of here. And there's a 10K resistor that um, is right there. So this 10K resistor fried and as for the diode, it's down here, and I, I did find the right part number. It's listed down here. So this diode's missing, and that resistor's missing. I don't know why, um, but go to show you, I've never had to deal with this on a board before. I know some of you guys have done the MOSFETs here, um, but um, here we go. That's what I had to find. So when you're looking for zero ASICs, don't forget to look at the other places you need to look before you start throwing chips out. It might just scan the board. You might see something weird. And that's about all the video I have for tonight. But I just wanted to drop that note to make you guys look other places than just chips and resistors and capacitors and other great stuff. So thank you for watching. And I hope this helps you guys. Talk to you later.